Welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you're here. Today I'm going to check out the Royobi 40 volt battery operated pole saw. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I was cutting some limbs from a stepladder, which is something I'm uncomfortable doing. And a lot of viewers wrote in and commented that I might want to try a pole saw. So that's why we're here today. There are a number of reasons why I went with this Ryobi 40 volt electric pole saw. I'll go over some of those with you, well, right now. So I don't have any experience with a pole saw. I knew about them, but I always thought a pole saw was kind of strange because I could imagine it would get stuck on a limb and then I'd have to climb a ladder and get the pole saw unstuck from the limb. But uh, that's probably a real concern and I'm gonna have to be really careful how I do it. But at any rate, I started looking at pole saws online. I started looking at some other videos and thought, you know what, that could be pretty handy, especially if, even if you have some small one inch or two inch limbs that are just out of reach. So I'm excited to try this out. Now, why did I go with this saw? I went through so much internal grief trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, I was looking at, first of all, the Husqvarna, uh, I think 10 inch or 12 inch gas powered pole saw. I love my Husqvarna 455 Rancher chainsaw. It's reliable, it starts well, it's, it's just great. So I thought, let me look at Husqvarna. They start at around $500 for the ones I was looking at. And I thought that's a little high for me right now. So I started looking at other options. Husqvarna does sell battery operated pole saws, also $500 range. Uh, then I started looking at cheaper saws. Uh, I almost settled on a Craftsman pole saw that uh, is at Lowe's for $200. And I thought gas powered still, uh, had pretty good reviews, but then I started watching some videos about DeWalt electric pole saws, and I have a lot of DeWalt 20 volt tools. And I thought, well, that could be pretty nice too, but they're also a little bit pricey. So here's how I came to the conclusion to try the Ryobi. And really it's two reasons. First of all, price. Second of all, because I already have the battery for it. So a few weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, I wanted to try out an electric string line trimmer. We all struggle with starting our elect or a gas powered trimmers every summer after they've sat all winter long. If you haven't drained the gas, they just seem to be always problematic. So I thought I'm going to try a battery operated string line trimmer. Again, I kind of went on the cheap with that. I found the Ryobi at Home Depot. Did I say Lowe's earlier? I don't know, but I found the Ryobi at Home Depot. And um, again, it was relatively inexpensive. It had pretty good reviews, 40 volt. So I bought the Ryobi string line trimmer and I gotta tell you, I've been really impressed with it. I can trim for probably 30 or 40 minutes. So it works pretty well. It came with a nice 40 volt battery that I have right here, really heavy duty, holds up pretty well. So I found this Ryobi pole saw at Home Depot and they happen to have the tool only option, no battery, no charger. So $119 plus tax, but I thought for $119, it would be a great way to try it out and see if it's something that I like. So let's open it up. Holes. Looks like several extension poles here. There's the blade. And a bag of parts. Looks like just a 
strap, and there's a handle here too, so let's pull them open. Yeah, that's just a strap. Allen wrench probably for adjusting the chain tension. Register your product. Operator's manual. Where does English end? Right there. All right, so 18 pages of English. I can handle that. Should I look at it? I don't know. I usually try to put things together first, and then sometimes I go back and look at the instructions to see if I did it right. Well, here we are. All the parts to the saw. Put my knife away. So, I think the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that the battery from my Stringline trimmer does, in fact, fit on here. It's very nice. So the battery's on. Looks like you can run it as a short saw or add two extension poles, which is pretty nice. Little chain cover. This is only an eight inch bar. Really short, but I believe it says in the description that you can cut up to a six inch limb, which is an awful lot to me. For, for my use, I don't think I'll be cutting anything more than maybe three inches. Feels good. There's a, an automatic bar oiler built in. You have to buy oil. It doesn't come with bar oil, so you have to buy a little can of that. That's nice. All right. What am I missing here? Apparently, you cannot connect it this short. Looks like you have to use at least one extension pole. What am I looking at here? All right, there's an arrow. Uh, wait, wait. Come on. This is what you get for not reading the instructions. This should go right, oh, there it goes. All right, but that won't fit there. Let me try this one. Now that I figured out how these poles go together, which is actually very easy if you just pay attention, the pole has a little black arrow. That would be the receiver pole. Then the other pole has a, an arrow stamped into the metal. If you look closely, I don't know if you can see that, a little arrow. So you just line the two arrows up, plug them in because it's just an electric plug inside there, slide down the collar and tighten it up. Nice coarse thread, feels good. So actually really easy, much easier than I made it look. Okay, so there's that. So then you could run it with just one pole. Well, that's already eight feet tall, and then you have another pole that's probably another two feet. Let's see how heavy that feels. Not bad, pretty well balanced. Seems a little top heavy. Maybe a, a gas uh, operated model would be a little more balanced because you have more weight in the back, but not bad. Should we turn it on? 
Variable speed, pretty nice. All right, well, let's put some bar oil in and go try it out. I'm gonna take the battery off just for safety's sake. So long. So the saw does not come with bar oil, so you have to pick up some bar oil if you don't already have some. I grabbed some of this Power Care bar and chain oil, so that should work pretty well. No funnel. I mean, I have a funnel, but it's all the way over on the workbench. Wow. That holds practically nothing. So I don't know how much it lubricates the chain, but. If you don't use this saw much, I'm guessing this quart would be a lifetime supply for somebody. But I'll use it in my chainsaw anyway. Yeah, that only holds, gosh, an ounce or two. Not much at all. But has a little sight glass on the side. You can see how much oil you have in there, which is pretty handy. And I think we're ready to go. The chain comes pre-adjusted or pre-tensioned, but I wanna just see how it works. So, comes with an Allen wrench, and you can loosen up the bar there, and then to tighten the bar up, there's another Allen screw inside here, and I've gotta say, this is not a really pleasant experience. I purposely loosen it up just to see how it would be. But I'm thinking, you know, an eight inch chain is not gonna stretch and get loose, I would imagine. So I don't think you're gonna be doing this very often. I probably shouldn't have touched it at all. It was fine when it came out of the box, but I wanted to, I just wanted to know. Yeah, this is not easy. Okay, at least for tightening the bar, they did include an Allen key that has a a little ball socket end. It actually seems smaller than this end, so you can't get in there and turn. Let's do this. Let's move this down. Again. You can't use this end of the Allen key to tighten it. You actually have to use the other end, which has that little ball shaped. That one fits in there and gives you a little bit of adjusting. Yeah, that's actually nicer. Again, maybe read the directions, Ed. Well, this might be a good test. These are some dead pine limbs that are probably 12 feet tall. I can't really reach them with the first extension pole, so I'm gonna add the second extension pole. Plugs in pretty tight go. Line up the arrows. Pretty simple. Not bad. I added this handle, but I don't really see myself using it because it's it's kind of close to the trigger. So the leverage is off a bit. I see myself really holding it from here. Look at that. I also like that this head is angled about 45 degrees. I've seen some other ones where the head is straight. So I like the fact that, that when you're holding the saw on an angle, now the blade or the, the chain is straight down. Let's give it a shot. Safety glass is on. I'm going to cut it out further first, just because this is my very first cut.
Okay, I should have undercut that first. Pole saw, where have you been my whole life? That was an old dead cherry limb. That was pretty hard. Well, after just about four cuts, chain looks good. You can see quite a bit of oil there, so the self-oiling mechanism is working pretty well. Little sight glass is pretty nice. So, so far, we're off to a good start. I've switched back to the shorter pole extension because a lot of these branches that are just about, again, maybe eight feet tall, but yet they hang down and they get caught on the rocks when I'm mowing with the tractor. So this will be great for just trimming around. I'm gonna undercut this one just a little bit. That is fun. Okay, here's a little trick I just learned. These bars are a little bit difficult to remove just because they fit tight, which you want, so that's fine. But I just started using the collar as a bit of a slide hammer. Works pretty darn well. I'm gonna add the second pole back again, and that way I can show you exactly how tall this thing is. I'm really impressed that they included the two bars for added height. I see myself probably using the first bar extension the most, which gives you eight feet of reach, but the second one adds another probably 24 to 36 inches. I don't think it's 36, but still, I mean, you know, if you're six foot tall like me and you've got this, you're going to reach up a good 12 feet plus, so that's pretty nice. Let me step back and show you the full length of this thing. So I'm six feet tall. My fingertips is eight feet. So I would say to the tip of the chain, you're looking at 12 feet. Is that even in the frame? Is it in the shot? The bar is pretty, you know, it's pretty solid, I, and again, this is brand new, so it's never gonna be better than it is right now. But it's pretty solid. Um, you would expect anything on a 10-foot pole to be wobbly, so it's what's expected. I think it's great. So here's my takeaway. My takeaway is I already love this little saw. The battery power, uh, it seems to have sufficient power to cut through anything. Uh, it's a little wonky to undercut first just because of the stability. You know, you're on this pole and when you undercut it wobbles, but that, that's probably common with any pole saw. Uh, otherwise, I think it's really great. Now, I understand if I would have spent five or six hundred dollars on a Husqvarna or a steel, I would have been telling you this is the best thing ever. But I have to say, for my use, I think this is gonna be just fine, and I'm really happy with my $119 pole saw. Hey, thanks for watching, and remember, if you like the content, I really appreciate it if you hit the like button, if you subscribe to the channel, and if you wanna know when I'm putting out videos in the future, click that little bell and make it turn gray. And I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.